Buchnera symbiosis. Uh, symbiotic associations. So they play an important role in multicellular life by facilitating the acquisition of new traits and expanding the ecological capacity of an organism. So in other words, this relationship is going to allow for both of them to be benefited in a way that will give them better traits. Um, insects who have obligate dependent intracellular bacterial symbionts have developed over time, they have been able to modify these lipid cells and turn them into what is called a bacterial site. And that is where the microbial symbiont is housed within the insect. So bacterial symbiont uh, is prevalent in arthropods. It's strictly transmitted vertically, which means it's going to get transmitted from the mother to the offspring. And there is two types of bacterial symbionts. It can either be primary or it can be a secondary symbiont. Um, in terms of Bugnera, which is all we're going to talk about, it, that's going to be a primary symbiont for the aphids. But in this picture right here, we can see the obligate mutualisms, and those are going to be your primary symbionts. And then these are some examples of secondary symbionts. So what is Bugnera? Bugnera is from the, gen from the genus Bugnera, kingdom bacteria, family bacteriaceae, and this is a gram-negative bacteria. However, unlike other gram-negatives, this bacterium has evolved over time to lose its outer uh, lipid polysaccharide layer, which makes sense since it's living inside of a host. Um, so there's no need to keep creating those genes if they're not being used. And that's part of why they have such a small genome and they're such genetically stable. And Bugnera is going to be the primary endosymbiont of the aphid. So in this picture right here, uh, we can see the aphid and it's pointing to uh, G. And that's where you're going to find all the secondary symbionts that we see in the aphid. And some of them, you know, uh, such as Rickettsia, uh, Wolbachia, Pseudomonas, um, and B over here, that's where we have the primary symbiont, which is the Bugnera. On the right here, we can see an aphid. Uh, the middle picture is showing the bacterial site, which is where the Bugneras are going to get housed within the aphid. And then the picture on the further right, it just shows the um, the bacterial side with the Bugnera, Bugnera bacteria, bacterium inside. So what is a symbiosis? So symbiosis is a mutual beneficial relationship between two different organisms. So in this case, it's going to be a mutualistic symbi symbiosis because both the Bugnera and the aphid are going to be benefiting from this relationship. It's also an obligate symbiosis because as we will, or as I will talk about later on, they can't live without each other. So they require each other to be able to thrive. So what is an aphid? An aphid is a small sap-sucking insect, also known as a green fly or a black fly, and it's the cause of many agricultural damage. So it's very much hated across the agricultural world because it causes such a da it has such a damaging rule when it comes to uh, plants. One of the main problems that it has is it transmits a virus called a lidiovirus, and that virus is going to cause the yellowing of the plants, so the plant becomes sick and eventually will die off. And this is all because the aphid is feeding, it's feeding off of it. 
Um, so the diet is going to be high in carbohydrates, but deficient in amino acid. The only amino acid that they are going to be able to acquire through this diet is glutamine, which later I'm going to talk about because that, that's important. Um, so the, the aphid is going to rely on the intracellular symbiont uh, Bugnera to supply the aphid with essential amino acids. So their interaction has been dated back to 150 to 200 million years ago. And like I previously said, under natural conditions, one cannot exist without the other. So they need each other to be able to survive. They've become so dependent on one another that if one, that one cannot live if the other one is not present. So the Bugnera is located intracellularly um, in a bacteriocyte, which is a modified lipid cell that the aphid has evolved over time. And the symbiont is surrounded by a vesicle called the symbiosome. And this bacterium will rely on the host to ensure the transmission to the next generation, so from mother to offspring. So what is the aphid getting out of all of this? It's getting essential amino acids because they're not capable of secreting their own or synthesizing their own amino acid. The Bugnera is going to provide them with those amino acids. Um, and in a study where they were trying to prove that the amino acids, the essential amino acids were synthesized by the bacterium, what they did is they had a, a medium and they grew the aphid and they noticed that the aphid or they had a well yeah they had the medium and they grew the aphid and they noticed that the aphid was growing it was reproducing and it was producing those essential amino acids so like okay well what's going to happen if we give antibiotics so then they gave an antibiotic and they they realized that the aphid was no longer growing it wasn't reproducing um and there was no essential amino acids. So then they relayed that to, okay, well then the Bugnera is the one producing all of this. Um, they further went on to prove this by labeling sulfur and nitrogen that was coming into the aphid. And then they were later found, those same sulfur and nitrogens were found in the bacteriosome and were later linked to the Bugnera actually synthesizing it. And finally, uh, whenever they sequence the genome of the um, Bugnera, they found out that uh, based on the genome sequencing that the Bugnera carried the gene required for the biosymbiosis of essential amino acids. They lack genes needed for the biosynthesis of non-essential amino acid, which is where the aphid comes into play, and they lacked other genes commonly found in free-living or facultative intracellular bacteria. So the benefits for the Bacnera nutrients, uh, since it is intracellular, the host is going to supply the energy, the carbon, and the nitrogen, and that nitrogen is essential because it's uh, needed to be able to produce those essential amino acids. Um, glutamine is also important because it gets converted into glutamic acid by the bacteriosome for the bacteria, uh, bacteriosome to then take up and synthesize those essential amino acids. So if in a Brief overview, Bugnera cannot synthesize non-essential amino acids, so it's not able to synthesize proline, serine, tyrosine, aspergine, and aspartate. Uh, and Bugnera requires uh, glutamine as a substrate for the biosynthesis of essential amino acids, so arginine, histidine, and tryptophan. Um, in another study, they wanted to see well, what else is the Bugnera influencing when it comes to the aphid? Um, so they do the same thing. They grew it. They uh, gave, they treat it with different antibiotics. And they found that the linked width and weight 
of the aphid without the bugnera decreased significantly. I believe it was something around 50% decrease, while the number of offspring reduced to 100%. So if they had, if the bugnera had been removed, they were not able to produce any offspring. So the literal virus, um, like I said, it infects plants and it's transmitted through the aphid. So the aphid is going to be the vector. They're going to pick it up from an, an infected plant. It's going to get carried by the aphid and then it's going to be transmitted to another plant. And this causes the yellowing of the plant um, as a result of the viral infection. So the aphid is going to fit on an infected plant and the phloem is going to contain the virus. This is going to make its way to the hindgut. From there, it will go through the body cavity. Um, it will come into what it's um, the aphid's blood and from there it will make its way to the salivary gland where it will reproduce and then await until they feed again and then it infects another plant. So it's about the size that um, Bugnera species have high amounts of uh, chaperone and proteins which bind to the literal virus as well as other viruses. So this symbion, it's believed to produce a protein that's going to bind to the virus and prevent the aphid's immune system from recognizing the virus so that it can go on and infect other plants. And finally, the relationship between aphids and ants. So aphids, like I said previously, are they have a very sugary diet, and as a result, their waste is very sugary, and this is called honeydew, and it's something that ants really, really love. So what the scientists started to notice was that these ants were farming these aphids and they were stroking them with their antennas uh, to stimulate the release of honeydew. Um, and this was being their sole source of, of food. So the benefit for the aphid was the aphid uh, was well taken care of, it was safe, it was kept is kept fed um, when a host plant was depleted of nutrients the ants will pick up the aphid and they will transfer it to a new source of food and when um, predators try to attack the aph the aphid the ants will fight off the uh, intruders the predators so what is the benefit for the ant so the ant is going to have a steady supply of honeydew and even though aphids are almost always wingless, in certain environmental conditions, they're able to, tr they're, if the conditions are ideal, they're able to develop wings. Well, these ants will make sure that they can clip those uh, wings to ensure that their aphids don't go away. So the ant will protect the honeydew at all costs because that's its benefit from this relationship. Um, they also secrete chemicals from their 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 feet that subdue the aphids and keep them from keep them immobilized pretty much so um these are my references um and like i said so the benefit even though even though it seems harsh at the end of the day you know they're both getting benefited the ants getting its honeydew and the aphid is being protected and it's it's being fed. Um, so that's it. That's uh, the symbiotic association between aphids and Bucknera.